The, this Monday, January 24th, is the feast day of St. Francis de Sales. He stands out as a pioneer of lay spirituality, crowned by his classic work, Introduction to the Devout Life. Its central message was that the way of spiritual perfection is not only for the few. It did not require great austerities or withdrawal from our everyday life in the world. He wrote, and I quote, the practice of devotion has to be adapted to the strength, to the life situation, and to the duties of each individual. By present day standards, this impetus to increasing our love of the Lord would be considered rigorous, but nonetheless an encouragement. Born and raised in the mountainous area of the Duchy of Savoy in 1567, Francis was trained as a doctor of the law in Padua, but he chose then a priestly rather than a civil career. And soon after ordination, he was already distinguished as a pre preacher and minister to the poor and to the sick. It seemed that his early assignment to the area around Lake Geneva in the area of the Chablais, that is between Lake Geneva and Mont Blanc in the Swiss French border region for which he volunteered was almost a suicidal mission because of dangers arising since it had become completely Calvinist. Several times he escaped assassination attempts on his own life. However, by force of his love and self-sacrifice, he had some success in converting followers of John Calvin and was named Bishop of Geneva. Unable to enter that city at any time, he had to base his administration outside in the town of Annecy. In efforts to respond to his opponents, Francis de Sales stood out for his message of love and moderation that had enormous effect in reestablishing the vitality and credibility of Catholicism at a very difficult time. Among the great saints of the period during this Protestant Reformation time, as spirit, bishop and spiritual director, Francis de Sales expounded a message of love, gentleness, and moderation that had enormous effect in reestablishing the vitality and credibility of the Catholic Church. The main complaint against his methods came from rigorous critics of the time who charged that he made it appear all too easy to become a saint. St. Francis became a close confidant and supporter of a young widow, Jane Francis de Chantel, who then went on to found the Order of the Visitation Sisters. Other religious congregations that in time claimed his patronage include the missionaries and oblates of St. Francis de Sales, the Salesians, he had quite an influence on Don Bosco, and the Sisters of St. Joseph. Francis achieved wide fame through the publication of his book, An Introduction to the Devout Life. It was quickly translated from the French into several languages, and it remains a classic of Christian spirituality. Indeed, it had a profound influence on St. Vincent de Paul, whom Francis actually met in Paris, probably around the year 1619. Much of his spiritual thought was shaped in reaction to pessimistic Calvinist views on predestination. The task of the spiritual director, 
he argued, was to adapt the life of devotion to the variety of walks of life. I quote, devotion is to be practiced differently by the noble, the worker, the servant, the prince, the widow, the young girl, the wife. Even more than this, the practice of devotion has to be adapted to the strength, life situation, and duties of each individual. Genuine devotion, he wrote, is simply true love of God. True love of God. The test of DeSales' true progress in the spiritual life, Ellsberg notes, is simply true love of God. And the test of such progress in the spiritual life was not to be in the rigor of one's self-mortification, but in the intensity of one's charity. Francis anticipated that the devout will daily fall short of their ideals, but rather than abase oneself as a worthless sinner, he urged the penitent to say, Alas, my poor heart, here we are, fallen into the pit we were so firmly resolved to avoid. Well, we must get up again and leave it forever. Francis de Sales died in 1622 and was buried on this day in Annecy. He was canonized already on April 19th, 1665 and declared a doctor of the church in 1877. In 1923, Pope Pius XI named him the the patron saint of, of writers, and he is also patron saint of the Catholic press and of the hearing impaired. Here in Washington, we have what was my first assignment after ordination, St. Francis de Sales Church up in Rhode Island Avenue, Northeast. And as well, there is another one dedicated to him in Southern Maryland. Two quotes of St. Francis de Sales that are especially revealing of his character to me are, first, there are no galley slaves in the royal vessel of divine love. Every man works his oar voluntarily. This leads some to hold that he is also the patient of oarsmen on crew teams, since he himself as a youth was a rower. And I particularly like this one, do not wish to be anything but what you are, and try to be that perfectly. St. Francis de Sales, pray for us.